Hello, dear friends. Today I am going to deliver my second lecture on bridge engineering, and which includes the waterway also, a flex, economic span of bridge, length of bridge, and score depth of the bridge. Okay, then we will proceed further. What is the waterway? The area through which water flows under a bridge structure is known as a waterway. The area through which water flows under a bridge structure is called as a waterway. Then, what are the general principles to be considered while fixing the waterway? The increased velocity due to the obstructed waterway. Why waterway is obstructed due to construction of bridge? Should not be exceeded than permissible velocity under the bridge. And the freeboard for high level bridges should not be less than 60 cm or 600 mm. Sufficient clearances should be provided for navigational requirements. And how the waterway is calculated by simple formula. What is the discharge? Discharge is equal to area into velocity. Then how the area is calculated? Area is equal to discharge divided by velocity where Q is equal to design discharge and V is equal to maximum permissible velocity of flow. Okay. Then we will see what is the linear waterway i explained in earlier lecture also it is measured in meter because it is linear measurement so linear measurement of waterway along the bridge or it is the sum of all clear spans of bridge what is the clear span of bridge i explained earlier it is the clear distance between two adjacent supports and in case of large alluvial streams with undefined banks the linear well waterway is calculated by Lessis formula what is the Lessis formula? Lessis formula is linear waterway is equal to C into under root of Q where L is equal to linear waterway in meter and C is equal to constant which is 4.8 but generally it varies from 4.5 to 6.3 as per local conditions Q is equal to maximum design discharge which is in cubic meter per second and if H is head causing discharge and if HA is the afflux then the linear waterway is calculated by this formula maximum design discharge divided by depth of water multiplied by square root of 2G into bracket H plus HA and the calculated linear waterway is divided into number of spans keeping in view the economy of bridge it is very simple. Then, as discussed earlier also, what is the afflux? The phenomenon of heading up of water on the upstream side of a bridge is called afflux or it is the level difference between upstream side and downstream side water level of a bridge. Why afflux should be kept as low as possible? Because it results in providing shallow depth of foundation of the bridge, means shallow depth of foundation for piers and abutments. If lower the velocity, lower will be the scoring. Okay. It helps in deciding the top levels and lengths of the guide banks and flood protection bunds conveniently and economically. And it also facilitates the provision of bridge at lower level with sufficient freeboard. Why sufficient freeboard is required for high level bridges? Sometimes for navigational requirements. Okay. Then there are two empirical equations used for determining the afflux. First is the Merriman's equation and second is the Molworth's equation. What is the Merriman's equation? Merriman e equation is HA is equal to VA square by 2G into big bracket and there is another small back bracket A divided by CAC bracket complete square of bracket and minus into another bracket A divided by A1 small bracket complete big bracket complete where HA is equal to our flex in meter VA is equal to velocity of approach in meter per second A is equal to natural waterway area at the bridge site in meter square AC is equal to contracted area in meter square and A1 is in large area at the upstream side of the bridge in meter square and where C is equal to coefficient of discharge and which is 0.7 for sharp entry and which is 0.9 for bell mouth entry. There is one another equation to deter determine the coefficient of discharge and it, it is 
calculated by empirical formula also that coefficient of discharge but the values are generally given in the analytical examples okay then second equation is molworth's equation h a is equal to v a square divided by 17.9 plus 0 0.015 bracket complete and in another bracket there is small bracket a divided by a c bracket square minus 1 and this molworth's equation is also used to calculate the flux okay then we will discuss about determination of economic span of bridge which is very important term and always asked in the examination the economic span is the span for which overall cost of bridge is minimum or it is the cost such that where cost of superstructure is equal to cost of substructure then for every derivation there are assumptions and you must know the assumptions because we are engineers and all the time we are assume certain thing to get certain thing so what is the first assumption the bridge has equal span lengths second cost of supporting system very square with the span length why because what is the bending moment for uniformly distributed load for simply supported beam it is wl square by 8 then what is l square that is the square of span then cost of flooring and parapet varies directly with the span cost of one pier and its foundation is constant and cost of one abutment and its foundation is constant these are five assumptions made in the analysis of economic span then how will there are certain notifications or certain denominator l l is equal to total linear waterway what is small l it is economic span length what is capital n capital n is total number of spans how they are calculated that is total linear waterway divided by economic span we get the number of spans then what is cp cp is cost of one pier and its foundation what is cab cab is cost of one abutment and its foundation what is cap cap is cost of approaches and what is tc tc is equal to total or overall cost of bridge how many number of peers are there total number of spans minus one that are the number of peers and for typical bridge there are two abutments and two approaches then cost of superstructure is calculated by a1l square plus a2l okay then where a is equal to constant for supporting system such as a beam which varies with the square of length a2 is equal to constant for flooring and parapet respectively which varies with the length or which varies with the span what is the total cost of bridge it is the cost of superstructure plus cost of sub substructure what is what is what what are the different types of sub substructures piers are there abutments are there and approaches are another thing there are two approaches and railings also then total cost of bridge how it is calculated number of spans into bracket a1l square plus a2l plus n minus 1 means number of peers multiplied by cost of peer plus 2 into cost of abutments plus 2 into cost of approaches then tc is calculated the n is replaced by capital l divided by small l then we can get tc is equal to a1 into l l plus a2 into l plus cp l divided by small l minus cp plus 2 cab plus 2 cap this is our first basic equation for total cost of bridge this is one basic e equation and this basic equation we differentiate it with respect to economic span l then dtc divided by dl is equal to a1 capital l plus zero that is constant minus cpl divided by l square minus zero this is constant plus zero plus zero then dtc by dl is equal to a1l minus cp capital l divided by l square and for cost to be minimum dtc by dl is equal to zero then we get the formula by evaluating this cp is equal to a1l square then L is equal to square root of CP divided by A1 and this is the formula for determining the economical length of bridge. So you must remember this derivation in the examination when they ask to derive the formula for economic span of bridge. 
where L is equal to economics point of bridge, CP is equal to cost of PR and how A1 constant is calculated that is cost of superstructure divided by length square. This equation is suitable for steel girder bridges as well as truss bridges as well as arch bridges. It is very very critical and you must remember this equation okay. Then as per IRC recommendation the value of economic span are given below. Generally IRC is based on the experience and there are certain empirical formulas for RCC slab bridge economic span is equal to 1.5 into capital H. For steel girder bridges it is 1.75 into capital H. For masonry arch type of bridges it is 2 into H. And for steel truss bridges it is equal to 3 into H. What is the H? H is the height of bridge or H is the vertical clearance which is available at the bridge side. That is very important. And how we determine the length of the bridge when you know the economic span? It is very simple. L or L1 is equal to n into l n means number of spans l is equal to economic span plus into bracket n minus 1 into b where n is equal to number of economic spans l is equal to length of each economic span and b is equal to thickness or breadth of pier please look at this figure this is b this is breadth of pier this is b and these are the l's that is clear span these are the else clear span clear span means clear distance between intermediate support in such a case how it is calculated in this case there are three spans so n is equal to 3 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 and this is the b that is breadth of pier okay we will proceed further then we determine the score depth score depth is very important the process of cutting or deepening of riverbed due to action of water what is the action of water it is velocity of flow and due to velocity of flow there is deepening of riverbed there is vertical deepening which is called as a scoring and horizontal expansion which is called as a erosion erosion is the process of scoring which causes the horizontal widening of a river for safe and sound design of bridge, it is important to estimate the correct score depth. That is very important. And there are two types of score depth. One is the normal score depth and another is maximum score depth. These two score depths you must remember. Okay. Then what is the normal score depth? Normal score depth is the depth of the water at the middle of stream when it carrying the maximum flood discharge. You must remember that normal score depth is measured at the middle of stream and wind stream carrying the maximum flood discharge and it is determined by soundings or theoretical methods according to type of streams okay then score depth in alluvial stream score depth in alluvial stream there is a case a where linear waterway of the bridge is equal to regime width in such a case the d or normal score depth is calculated by formula empirical formula d is equal to 0.473 into bracket capital Q divided by small f rest to 1 by 3 where d is equal to normal score depth below HFL for regime section of channel Q is equal to maximum design discharge f is equal to laces factor that f is calculated by 1.75 into square root of m where m is mean diameter of particle size of river material in mm that is very important what is m m is the mean diameter of particle size of river material in millimeter okay then second case that is linear waterway is less than regime width in such a case there are contractions so we have to calculate the normal score depth with contracted waterway how it is calculated d dash is equal to d into bracket w divided by l raised to 0.61 where d dash is equal to normal score depth with contracted waterway in meter d is equal to normal score depth in meter and w is equal to regime width of the stream and which is equal to weighted perimeter you must regime width is equal to weighted perimeter and how the weighted perimeter is calculated there is one empirical formula weighted perimeter p is equal to 4.8 q raised to one half or square root of q that is formula for weighted perimeter and for which case it is used when linear water is less than the regime width and what is the l l is the linear waterway provided under the bridge 
then there is second case coal depth in qc alluvial stream first we see the uh, we discuss the coal depth in alluvial streams then another case is that coal depth in qc alluvial streams streams having rigid banks and erodible beds when velocity is known then d is calculated by q divided by w into v w into v where w is equal to fixed width of stream in meter and v is equal to velocity of flow in second case when slope is known then maximum flood discharge is calculated by this empirical formula 1 by n w into s raised to 1 by 2 and d raised to 5 by 3 and from this formula we can calculate the d also when you know the bed slope when you know the manning constant and when you know the regime or fixed width of stream and when velocity and slope are not known then Normal scroll depth is calculated by formula 1.21 q raised to 0.63 whole divided by small f raised to 0.33 and w raised to 0.6 where f is equal to less is shield factor or shield factor. Okay. Then what is the maximum scroll depth? Maximum scroll depth it is the depth of the water at round obstruction to the flow of water when the river carries the maximum flood discharge. Means what is a normal scroll depth? that is measured in the, in the middle of the stream but what is the maximum score depth it is measured at the round obstruction it is very important and both depths are measured when river carrying the maximum flood discharge then what are the irc recommendations for different type of bridges bridge on straight reach or uh, bridge on straight reach of stream it is calculated by 1.5 times of normal score depth for bridge site on the curves where cross currents or eddies are exist in such a case it is 2 into normal score depth and in case of bridge causing contraction the formula is there <coughs> the depth is calculated by formula normal score depth into bracket w by l raised to 1.56 then we get that, that this is the normal score depth at bridge where there is a contraction okay then values of maximum score depth in different situations sometimes in mcq such a questions are asked and you must remember these figures to get you the maximum mass or to score the maximum mass in a straight reach the value of maximum score depth is 1.27 into maximum score depth is equal to 1.27 into d where what is d d is normal score depth at moderate bend it is 1.50 d at severe bend it is 1.75 d at right angle bent it is 2D, at the noses of pier it is 2D and on upstream side of noses of guide banks it is 2.75D. So in the worst scenario the value of maximum score depth increases and in the light scenario it is decreases or the value is in lower figure. Then what are the different methods to prevent the scoring? First is the river should have streamline flow. Second, soil to raises the maximum velocity of flow. This soil has to raises the maximum velocity of flow. Third is sufficient waterway is provided below the bridge. Then shape of piers. The shape of pier should be such that it should not cause the eddies and currents of the water. So certain shape is given to the piers to not to cause the eddies and currents in the water. Pitching should be done on upstream side, downstream side and the portion of the bridge and sheet piling or driving of piles in the river bed should be done on the upstream side as well as downstream side to prevent the scoring. These are the important factors or important measures to be adopted to avoid the scoring. And for more details, you may contact our administrator phone number is 9822604968 you can take the screenshot of that my email id is here svkulkarni72 at the rate gmail.com you may <coughs> contact me for further details okay and uh, if you like this lecture then you subscribe me also and uh, continue to listen to listen me for further lectures to get some knowledge about bridge engineering to everybody and it must be useful for your competitive type of examinations okay thank you very much okay bye bye see you see you like